Back when SUVs were introduced, people thought that they were functional, but quite boring. They're essentially just boxes on wheels. And then when EVs were introduced, people thought that they were impractical and not as much fun to drive as a lightweight and nimble sports car. So what happens when you combine EVs and SUVs? Do you get boring squared? Well, these three next cars are trying to break that mold of being impractical and boring EV SUVs. Take the BMW iX for example. It's available with up to 610 horsepower. The Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV is not as powerful as the iX, but it is loaded with comfort and technology. And finally, there's the Audi e-tron. It's being renamed to the Audi Q8 e-tron, but it is still a very stylish EV SUV. Let's dive right into it and find out if these EV SUVs are fun. Starting off with the BMW iX, the M60X drive variant provides 610 horsepower and 811 pound-feet of torque. It'll accelerate from a standstill to 100 kilometers an hour in less than 4 seconds. Next is the Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV. It's not as powerful as the BMW, but you can get it with up to 402 horsepower and 633 pound-feet of torque. The one that we have here is the 350 with a much more modest 288 horsepower and 564 pound-feet of torque. Its 0 to 100 km an hour time is around the 6.5 second mark, but that number quickly drops to around 5 seconds in the more powerful EQE 500. And finally, we arrive at the Audi Q8 e-tron. It too has 402 horsepower just like the EQE 500, but a bit less torque at 490 pound-feet. The 0 to 100 km an hour sprint is around the 5.5 second mark. Now let's see how all of those numbers translate to in the real world. And to put a little bit of perspective, let's see how these big and heavy SUVs compare to the little sports car. manager said that we shouldn't be drag racing, but there's no better way to visualize the speed of these electric SUVs. Plus, Open Road Auto Group does have a racing program in the Toyota Gazoo Racing GR Cup. The driver of this GR86, Adam Eisman, is also one of the two drivers of our number 69 Open Road Racing GR Cup car. Now, let's get back to the drag race, which was done on a closed course. Let's rewind that a little bit. As the sprint times predicted, the BMW iX finished first, followed by the Audi Q8 e-tron, and then the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350. And of course, the little sports car came in last. Now, we could have pitted these big and heavy EV SUVs against something faster, like let's say a Toyota Supra, but the results probably would have been the same. And if we had access to the Mercedes EQE 500, then they definitely would have been the same. And in any case, to get anywhere near the performance of the BMW iX, you would need something as fast as a Lamborghini Huracan STO. So these EV SUVs are definitely fast in a straight line. What about when the roads get twisty? Well, all of them have big and heavy batteries, which don't help with the weight savings, but the batteries are mounted in the floor. This lowers the center of gravity, which give the SUVs a planted feel around corners. Additionally, all three can be equipped with air suspension that can resist body roll through twists and turns. Although these EV SUVs don't have the glorious noises of gasoline vehicles, the instant response and power of the electric motors will definitely raise your heart rate by a few beats a minute. So when it comes to fun, these EV SUVs are definitely that but they would be pretty useless if they weren't as practical as their gasoline counterparts. Thankfully, these electric SUVs actually provide the same or more interior volume. The BMW iX has a bit more headroom and legroom across both rows of seats and more cargo space in the trunk when compared to the BMW X5. Unfortunately, it is not available with a third row like the X540i, 
but then again, the X5M or the plug-in hybrid version aren't available with third rows either. The Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV is similar in size to the Mercedes GLE. It has similar headroom and legroom across both rows of seats. However, trunk volume is a little bit larger in the GLE than in this EQE, but it's not by a whole lot. As for the Audi Q8 e-tron, it is similar in size to the gasoline-powered Q8 with an ample amount of passenger space, but the cargo capacity is a bit less than the standard Q8 just like in the Mercedes. Also, the Q8 e-tron is available as a normal-looking SUV or a sport pack design that further enhances the looks of this stylish car. Around a big city, all three EV SUVs are comfortable and easy to drive. The iX and the EQE SUV are available with rear wheel steering. What this system does is that it turns the back wheels in the opposite direction to the front wheels at slow speeds, thus reducing the turning circle and making the large SUVs more maneuverable. The Audi Q8 e-tron does not have this feature, but it did receive a revised steering tuning to make the car feel more agile and nimble in a busy city like Vancouver. The Audi Q8 e-tron has a driving range of 459 kilometers. The BMW iX M60 has a tiny bit more at 463 kilometers. But the iX xDrive 50 version has the longest range of up to 521 kilometers. However, what you gain in range, you lose in power because the xDrive 50 version only produces 516 horsepower instead of the 610 of the M60. The Mercedes EQE 350 has the least range at just 407 kilometers, but that number increases to 433 kilometers in the EQE 500, along with more power from the electric motors. Recharging these SUVs from a level 3 DC fast charger takes roughly the same amount of time, about 30 minutes from 10% to 80%. From this level 2 charger, you're looking at around 9.5 to 12 hours to fully recharge these EV SUVs. But the biggest difference between the three is their pricing. The 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron and the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 are the least expensive, with starting prices of $95,950 and $94,900 respectively. However, the Mercedes can be equipped with optional extras that can push the price well into the six-figure mark. Additionally, the EQE 500 starts with a six-figure price tag. The 2023 BMW iX M60 starts at $121,750, but it is available in lower and less expensive trim levels. While some may still look at EV SUVs as being boring, these three are anything but. They each have their own unique characteristics, they are just as practical as their gasoline counterparts, and most importantly, they are definitely not boring to drive. If you'd like to know more about any of these three SUVs or test drive one yourself, please don't hesitate to contact one of our product specialists at one of our two open road BMW locations in Vancouver and Langley, our Mercedes-Benz location in Surrey, or our Audi retailer in Burnaby. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.